there. Today on A Taste of Alexander Technique, um, we'll be working with Chelsea on a couple of different things, um, specifically geared around time. What is time? What is the reality of time versus our perspective? Sometimes when we go about our daily lives, there's this sense of urgency to get a task done, to get to a location. What we kind of lose in that in whole in the whole scheme of things is what leads up to those moments. The process itself, where all the learnable moments are. So what Chelsea and I are going to do today um, is play with these concepts through a couple different tactics. We're going to be playing with 10 seconds. What are your perceived 10 seconds? The second thing that we're going to do is I will count for 10 seconds using the Mississippis to make sure that you have exactly 10 seconds to do whatever you choose to do. Third time around, I'm going to give you basically unlimited time by saying you're not late until you get there. So that's the first part. The second part we're going to be doing is playing with our senses. With these two activities, we have the opportunity to enjoy the little moments. And this is kind of like that little moment where you can just breathe and be with yourself and keep it simple. I hope you enjoy. Um, feel free to join with the activities that are happening. They are timed so that you can experience the moments as well. Hi there, and welcome to A Taste of Alexander Technique. Today we have my friend Chelsea joining us today. Chelsea, would you like to tell a little bit about yourself? I am a mechanical engineer, so I do lots of design and analysis. That's what I, I studied um, singing and engineering at the same time, and then pursued more of my engineering track and kind of found myself missing that like heart and soul. <laughs> of myself. So then I went back to school for singing and now I do teach as well, kind of balancing both of them. And singing is kind of like the joy from my desk job, the thing that feels amazing most of the time. <laughs> if you had to give a quote unquote definition of the work or what it means to you, how would you describe the Alexander work? Um, Alexander work to me is movement, but stillness and taking away these layers of things that we're holding on to even mentally and physically and kind of getting finding the more authentic like you bringing yourself to places what topic did you choose today and why is it important to you the topic that i chose today is playing with time and it's important to me because I struggle with being present and I'm kind of always planning or thinking about something else that's not really what's happening in this moment. And then, so the idea of time is just that it's, I feel like a lot slower than I realize that everybody realizes. So in other words, we have more time than we think. Yeah. When we take time, basically what we're giving ourselves is the option to process the information. Um, the way we're going to do it today, and this can, this is like one of our five minute craft sort of things, but Alexander style, where you can take five minutes out of your day between jobs, between work, you can spend a little time with yourself and simply observe time. Um, so the way we're going to do this is we are going to play with walking around your space. So now there are a couple different options because I know that not everyone has a big space that they are living in. Um, we're gonna play with either, you can physically walk around the room for 10 seconds or in your space, you can take time and trace outlines, look around, observe, touch different objects in your room um, for 10 seconds. So I, you I got a big space here. There's a couple cat tubes, but <laughs> I'll walk around them. <laughs> so what I'm going to have um, Chelsea demonstrate for you, and you guys can follow along, is she's going to walk around her room, or you can look around your room, for 10 seconds. But here's the deal. You can't count. It's perceived 10 seconds, not the actual 10 seconds. 
whenever you are ready. It was probably like around 10 seconds, if not below. Because most of the time we're trying to get to that destination pretty quickly. So great analogy is walking in Boston and you're trying to get from one destination to the next. And it's like a, a block over, a couple blocks over. You have 10 minutes to get there, five minutes to get there. And you rush with all haste. You're like all like this, going, 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 seeing your destination, hoping you're gonna get there, thinking about all the things that you're gonna meet when you get there and all that stuff. When the second, when we get to the third time around, that's kind of kind of help gel that together and that thought process. And maybe give you the option to move differently. Who knows? Second time around, I will actually physically count. Okay. So this time around, I'm going to just do it the Mississippi style. All right. All right. And you're ready. And one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, 10 Mississippi. That was long. <laughs> It's so funny. That's most people's reaction. It's very fun. Yeah. All right. The third time's a little bit different. And we're kind of doing the complete opposite of number one and the complete opposite of number two. Like imagine if there were three opposites, this is the third. Um, so for our third one, the thought process is you're not late until you get there. And this is a very tough concept for a lot of people to swallow. One, because the goal is always to be early. For most professions, you want to be early to show that you are professional, to show that you are, you know, taking the initiative, all the works. But what if you weren't late? What if that wasn't a concept? We have that option far more than we think we do. So, same thing. No counting this time again, back to number one a little bit. But with the thought process, you have time to explore, you have time to take in the room. You have time to make contact with things. You have time to notice your feet, to notice your breathing, because you're not late until you get there. And even then you're not late, let's be honest. Okay. Whenever you're ready. How's that different? It's calmer. There's no pressure. Kind of grounding. Which one did you like best out of the three? The last one. People either go for the last one or the second one, depending on per on their perspective. Um, and usually the second one, because they like having time written out in front of them and noticing every second. Just having that thought process of ultimate time, unlimited time, whatever you want to call it, is a little overwhelming. But it's really not about lacking a schedule in this. Because quite honestly, that was probably about 10 seconds. Again, if not a little bit less. It's just the perspective of what those 10 seconds are has altered. So now I'm going to allow you to take as much time as you wish and take time looking around the room. 
Because even if we don't have the ability to get up, we have the ability to, you know, again, play with what I initially brought up, the, the tactile component, maybe smelling something. Like I have my essential oils near me, so I have something to smell to keep my senses active. Um, I have all these different shapes in my room that I can follow with my eyes and maybe like pay attention to my breath while I'm looking at that. I have mints nearby always to kind of give myself a little bit of a sense of, you know, some other sensory input that is current and in this moment. So all these little elements help to redirect me to the present versus where I want to be. Like where the goal is, where the end is. Because you know when you're teaching for a long time or you're working on a project, sometimes the end goal is to get some time for yourself. Ironically enough, right? Yeah. So why not give some time for yourself throughout the day? And maybe, maybe time won't feel so long. And that's the other part of the concept. Time can be long and short. It just depends on the situation and the mindset of what you're doing. What we're going to play with next in this whole series of concepts is I'm going to allow you to take time in your room. Take that little moment. Really explore different things. If you want to go grab some water, if you want to go get something that smells nice, that tastes nice, something you can do something like that, go right ahead. You have a total of a minute and you got it. You can do whatever you need to do. And you know, 10 seconds is long, so a minute's got to be longer than that. So with whatever you have in front of you, just, we're going to take time to enjoy it. Okay. And just observing the different textures, observing the smells. This is your one minute for yourself. An almond butter cup. <laughs> take the time to enjoy the flavors but also notice your surroundings you can play with seeing if you notice the weight on your feet all these different little things and looking at the shapes of the room feeling the textures of the room noticing the flavor of your almond buttercup <laughs> That yeah. sounds way better than a Reese's buttercup. And what are you noticing? Taking the time to really think about and taking it, thinking about what it tastes like. I enjoyed it more than when I eat like seven of them. You'd have been just like, cause it's like every little part of it I'm noticing. And then looking around, I'm noticing that I'm breathing more and I'm actually like it's different from meditating where I'm like, okay, you're supposed to be breathing in right now and breathing out, but it was like more natural. So what's different about the Alexander work than most works is we are very um, 
our focus, our extended focus is about how can we incorporate this into our daily life? How can we be with ourselves in any given moment, whether it be the best moment possible, just a neutral moment or something that's not your favorite day, our favorite moments. And how do we observe ourselves in those contexts in so that we can really come from a non-judgmental place? I mean, nobody's perfect, we're human. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So there are going to be times where there is that judgment element, but in those small opportunities where we take that time to observe without the judgment, it's really freeing in some sort of way. And it's, it's really about being in the present with yourself. And that is exceptionally different from most lines of work and thought because usually there's an, a, a direct activity that's associated with it. With this work, there really isn't. That's a good point. And I'm glad I did it right here, actually, because this is my work desk. And I have a lot of <laughs> not favorite moments here. Um, so any like kind of way to feel better or be with myself and not angry or whatever, or <laughs> frustrated with whoever, it's kind of nice that that can happen here too. Now, if we had a bow or ribbon to tie up this lesson, and this is not the end, this is the beginning of discovery for you. But if we had something to, a word or a phrase to describe what we experienced here today, or that was important to you, what would it be? Well, first I would say that the, you're not, the, you're not late until you get there is something that you've said to me before and stuck with me for pretty much ever. Anytime I feel like I'm late, I, that phrase comes into my mind. Um, so that's one of them, but then also the the senses. I had never thought of that before. So paying more attention to my senses. Like how often do we think of smell unless it's like something that's really potent? And never. <laughs> but yeah. And same with flavor, but like it's, these are things that we don't think about when we're in our work situation. So to have that opportunity to do so, it's, it's kind of nice. It's really nice. Well, thank you so much, Chelsea. This was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. For those who aren't familiar, this is a mindfulness technique that incorporates both mind and body and finding the unity, the connection between the two. Um, what it offers is an approach to our daily life, ourselves, with more ease. So basically what we're learning here is how to keep it simple. We discuss how habits are built over time subconsciously in the mind and physically in the body. What I offer is the opportunity for us to bring these subconscious thoughts, these um, holdings in our body, tension as some people would call it, and bring them forward so that we have the ability to observe them and explore them and then make conscious choices to see whether or not they serve us anymore. And from there, we're given the choice to either continue on as we are or try something different. Throughout all this, I am basically a reference point or guide providing you with space to make discoveries and have moments of understanding that are meaningful to you. At the end of our time, I ask for what's called the bow, which is basically a word or a phrase about something that stood out for you during our time, something that gives you context for future discoveries. The bow is not really the end, it's kind of the beginning of the learning process because we are introducing an idea, a thought process during our lesson time. And then once you leave the situation, you get to explore, to choose to explore it. Um, in your everyday life. And that's what's really beautiful and unique about the Alexander work. What I'm hoping that you get out of these times together is that you can start to see changes from person to person and how they take in the information, what their definition of the work is, and maybe coming to a conclusion or a thought process of what you believe the Alexander technique to be.